After countless requests, here it is. This is the Deep Cool Assassin 4 IV for those who drank shampoo. This is definitely one of the rather interesting coolers. It promises great performance at low noise and based on the red dot award alone, it promises to be beautiful and unique or in the very least unique. But to jump a bit ahead, it does look pretty cool, like invisible fan cool. But before we cover anything about the cooler, let's first cover the performance part. We tested the Assassin 4 on our 3900K benchmark machine running three different sets of workloads, 120, 250 and 320 watts over a permanent time span, whilst measuring the max temperature at every fan speed setting in 10% steps. The lowest 120 watts setting would be the most representative of the average gaming session, and at that one, the Assassin 4 performed like a champ. At 32.3 degrees C above ambient at max fan speed, the Assassin 4 managed to beat almost every other air cooler we have tested so far and landed shortly behind the Be Quiet Dark Rogue Elite and overall it is definitely on the higher end of the spectrum beating iconic alternatives such as the Noctia NHD15. A very, very good result. Slowly lowering the fan speed in 10% steps whilst recording the noise level allows us to create a noise to performance graph. Using this one we can see that the Assassin 4 is amongst the very best Best. It is not the best that we have tested, but next to the Dark Rocks and Doctor LHD 15, it closes off the gap between the very best and the okay coolers. What's interesting here is that the Assassin may have had the better max performance result, but the NHD15 was slightly quieter when spinning at max speed. Once you go down even further, the positions start to switch over and over again until both just reach noise floor. Upping the load to 250 watt does change the result to some degree. On here, the Assassin 4 managed to keep the CPU at 64.6 .6 degrees C above ambient, which positions the Assassin 4 at exactly the same spot spot as the Noctia NHD15 and slightly behind the Dark Rock 5 and Dark Rock Pro Elite. Still a very very good result top 4 but interesting to see that the Assassin 4 and NHD15 can perform identically depending on the workload. Over on the noise to performance graph for 250 watts we can see that the Assassin can also handle that sort of load at lower fan speeds. Although it's almost always behind the Noctia NHD15 and Dark Rock 5s it is still a very rock solid result. And now coming to the god category, 320 watts, or in other words, I am rendering as a fetish. Not so long ago, this category was absolutely dominated by big ass water coolers alone. Then the Dark Rock 5 series from Be Quiet was the first one to actually make it onto this list. However, as the Assassin 4 was actually released long before the Dark Rock 5s, it seems like there were already air coolers that could pull this off. I just didn't have any of them. At 86.3 degrees C above ambient, the Assassin 4 might have made the last spot on the list, but this is still an excellent result considering the fact that only three air coolers made it onto here at all. The corresponding noise to performance graph looks like somewhat what you would expect, empty. But hey, at least we now got two air coolers on here that actually create a line. With the Assassin 4, we got the second cooler that can do multiple measuring points, which I need to create a line in the first place. It might be offset by a few degrees from the Dark Rook Elite, but hey, they both survived 320 watts for like 20 minutes, which uh, yeah, that's that's really something. And I wouldn't advertise anybody to use an air cooler when pushing 320 watts permanently. I mean, I'm at least happy that I have a graph now. From a performance perspective alone, the Assassin 4 was or is definitely a beast. On every workload, it was at the top of the list. No doubt that this is an excellent air cooler. But it is also a very unique one, so let's talk about that. The Assassin 4 comes in a quite clean looking box, a simple carton wrapped in a white sheet of thicker paper containing an image and some specs in the back. Inside we will find a completely pre-assembled cooler as well as the installation hardware for every nowadays relevant socket. A manual, some isopropyl cleaning help, the most high quality Allen wrench I have ever gotten for free and the most high quality tube of thermal paste I have ever had included with a cooler. High quality really is a theme here and we will 
encounter this a lot more. And not to forget this fan bracket to which we will get later on. To install the cooler on AMD we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets and replace them with the AMD labeled screws. From there we need to take the AMD brackets and position them in an inwards pointing position and screw them down using the thumb screws. Over on Intel we need to take the Intel backplate according to your socket and place it behind your motherboard and in case you're on LGA 12 or 1150 and you need to adjust it to your specific one, don't waste as much time as I did. Only the screw moves up or down, not the whole plastic thing. I, I lost so much time just on that one. Anyway, once there, screw the backplate in by using the Intel screws, place the Intel bracket on there in either position 1 for the older sockets or 2 for LGA 1700 and screw everything down using the thumb screws. Now before placing the cooler down, we need to partially disassemble it. Thankfully however, Deepcool's design department did a fine job. We can remove this mesh plate by simply pulling on it on the sides and then the central fan can be removed by unhooking it at the ends and then just pull it out. But wait, kinda counterintuitive, but we will get to why that's important in a minute, but this is not the front fan, this is the back fan. In a standard case with a very standard airflow path, so in, in the front and then out in the back on the top, this side would be oriented towards the front of the case and that's the side without any fan on it. But to finish off the installation section first, thermal paste, screw it on using the allen wrench, connect everything, put it back together and don't forget that the fans are already combined using a splitter and then remember that the fan arrow on the central fan should be looking towards the back fan. Now this way of building a cooler is very, and, and I mean very unusual, and it is the first time that I have seen it in person, but it's it's kind of cool. There are two fans inside of the Deepcool Assassin 4. The central fan is a 140mm 1700rpm quick one pushing 79.1 CFM at 2.44mm of H2O, but it's the back one which is the most interesting, because this is a reverse spinning fan. Fan. So even if you are looking at, let's say, the nice side of the fan, this one is pulling air from inside the cooler and then pushing it out in the back. It is also spinning at up to 17 RPM, but due to it being only 120 mm size, the airflow is down to 58.06 CFM with up to 2.1 millimeters of H2O. So why did Deepcool do it this way instead of just slapping a very regular 120mm fan on the front like everybody else does? Well I don't really know and it's not like they are sharing their internal memos with me but I can see the benefits here. First off is RAM compatibility. This is a dual tower 164mm high, 144mm wide, 7 heat pipes, huge chunk of cooling power paired with a nickel plated copper base. This is one fat cooler. And what big fat coolers usually have is RAM compatibility issues. One that usually is showing up because the front fan is starting to hit the RAM. So what Deepcool did is just remove the front fan and then reposition it to the back. But because that would look just nasty on product images, they decided to make it a reverse one. And the end result is a pretty cool cooler. So RAM compatibility is soft. However, what about that heatsink that sits on the back of your motherboard? Well, depending on the combo that could create a problem. And there's a solution for that too. What you can do is just rip off that left fan and then just move it up one spot. The result may look a bit odd and it may lose a tiny bit of performance because the fan partially now sticks out in the top, but it's a solution. Now nobody can say that the cooler doesn't fit. And if that still isn't enough or if you have some fetish going where you absolutely need to see a fan to get you through the day, which I probably do have at this point, but for that we got this bracket. Using this one we can stick another fan to the front making it a triple fan cooler, of course with a secondary position in order to avoid the RAM clearance issue. Very very interesting design approach. Now in the past I have made the experience that reverse spinning fans are slightly worse performing compared to their regular counterparts. I'm not saying that this is a rule or that this is the case here, I just made the experience. However, even if Deepcool may have given up on some performance, they won a lot of 
other things. In a regular build, the first part of a cooler you are facing through the front panel would be the front fan. Ignoring the potential case fans here, but that fan would be the first noise generating thing in your way. For the Assassin 4, however, before you get to that fan, there is a whole chunk of heatsink. So you got kind of a buffer zone in between before the noise can actually start hitting you. The back fan doesn't really matter that much here. It's pointed backwards, that's one thing, but there is another heatsink in between and then another fan in between that will create more noise than the back one. So it's kind of just the front one that matters, or in this case, the central one. And whilst measuring this, or whilst measuring the noise level, it's kind of unfair, but it is how it is. So for our noise measurements, we pointed it exactly how it would be inside of a standard case. But in comparison to other fans or other coolers, the deep cool has that buffer zone, which gives it a bit of an advantage. On a smaller side note, there is a switch on top of the cooler, which is either set to two deep cool or four deep cool pixels. Now, this seems to be deep cool's way of doing a quiet mode, which then limits the fan speed down to 1350 RPM on both fans, which you can do, or you can just set up a fan curve and give it full blast with four pixels, which makes much more sense. And another thing, Thing, which was pretty cool and I should not forget about it, this little deep cool logo here. This is illuminated, but not with a separate ARGB connection. God forbid somebody would make it red. No, that one is attached to the splitter that connects both fans. Basically, if everything is connected, no matter the fan speed, it will be illuminated in the original deep cool color. Very simple, easy, and you don't really need to do anything because everything is pre-connected by default. So where do we stand? It's an exceptionally well executed cooler. Performance is top notch over the whole spectrum. The design is, well, that's for you to decide, but I really like the all black thing with a very, very tiny fraction of RGB, very cleanly implemented. It's very simplistic to the extreme and I like it, but that's up for you. But the one that got me is the quality of basically everything. The Allen wrench is great and magnetic, which was really a first one for me. It has rubber on it for some reason, but for protection and for easiness of use, but they did not have to do that. The thermal paste feels like I paid 15 bucks for it. The screws for the mounting have rubberized bottom sides to prevent scratches on the motherboard end, and Deepcool thought about so many things. Let's say you want to add a third fan. You got it. Let's say you need to move it up. You got it. Let's say you need to move the back fan up. You got it. Oh, one of the fans died because you stuck in a screwdriver in it while it was spinning. Well, that's what the other end of the Allen wrench is for, because all of the fans use the standard 120mm mounting, so you can replace it. This thing is so thought through that I couldn't figure out a scenario in which they over-engineered something to the point where they could create an issue. It is that much quality. Just keep in mind that the central 140mm fan bracket uses 120mm mountings too. There are fans for that, 140 fans with 120 mountings, just not many of them, but you can also just use a 120 by default. Performance, noise, quality, everything beautifully executed. Great product, I love it, perfectly fit for whatever you want to do nowadays. And the price isn't even that high. At below 100 euros right now and here, it is kind of budget friendly. For one of the top four air coolers I have seen as a whole, it is the least expensive one. So yeah, definitely a recommendation from my side. But okay, for today, this is going to be it for Deep Cool and their Assassin 4, something truly worthy of an award. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to create our own award for coolers that made it onto the top of our list without the overusage of RGB. Because manufacturers that keep their coolers good and clean do not get praised enough for that. Anyway, thank you for watching and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Be Quiet Dark Rogue Elite. So far, still the best performing air cooler we had. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.